I think this talk for me is going to be a little short because I'm I'm just running out of gas. You know, it's just been so amazing. And I really love the amount of beautiful input we've had from everybody in this group. It's really, it's really made it, as the title says, you are the school. Absolutely beautiful. You know what else he was saying? How Sid would say, uh, don't be talking about it all the time, you know, live it. There's just something about that. So I'm actually gonna suggest an experiment, okay? Now I know many of you will have things scheduled that you're going to go to <clears throat> in the three principles community and so on, and that's great. But if you don't, if you have a week or two with nothing scheduled, I wanna suggest a little experiment. You know, like I know there's tons of places to go to meet with other people in the community and talk and share and all of that's beautiful. But I suggest that you experiment with having a couple of weeks where you just be yourself. Like, just take a couple of weeks break after this of talking or thinking about the principles, you know? Sid encouraged that often when we were first around. I've told it before, but one time we were all sitting around in Sid's yard, a bunch of us just having a nice visit, but we were going on, am I thinking this, am I thinking that, and three principles this, am I three principles that? And Sid just, in a bit of a frustrated voice, said, oh, quit talking about that stuff. <laughs> and he said, if you don't quit talking about it and thinking about it all the time, you're never really going to see what you've, what you've learned, what you've been given. And I think it's so true. It really is true, you know. I have a, a quote here that I found. This is directly from Sid. <laughs> My advice is, don't talk about awareness and the principles all the time. You'll fill your head with hundreds of ideas, concepts, judgments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just live. Right? And to me, that's part of the definition of a quiet mind. You know, that even the principles, even our search for happiness, can fill our heads. You know? Can feel like striving. Can you know? And and I can tell you, Jen and I, we don't. We don't sit around talking about the principles much, very little actually, you know. We just enjoy each other's company. It's the same when we spend time with Ken and Elsie. I don't remember ever sitting down with him and talking about the principles, you know, all these 40 some years we've known them. Same with the Tuckers. You know, every once in a while something comes up. Sure, you know, or you know, Jane might say, Oh, I heard this on this tape the other day, and we talked for a minute. But mostly we just it's just being you know, and being together and, and having that, that really beautiful feeling together. So I'm just suggesting an experiment for a while for anybody that, you know, has had a lot on their schedule with the three principles, just experiment. Don't think about it for a couple of weeks or a couple of days, whatever, <laughs> you know, because in the end, it's what you know from inside, right? In the end, as Jim Beck said, that's all that really counts the love that's within, you know. We've had this beautiful couple of days together. I've just loved every minute. But when we sign off today, I ain't going to be thinking about it, you know. I'm going to go out in my garden and watch the birds, maybe cut the grass. It's getting long, you know, and I just enjoy myself, right? And just be, just be. I remember hearing a Native American say something similar. And I don't remember the exact words. It was a friend of ours. He was talking about the path, about finding your way. You know? And he said something to the effect of, be careful not to be captivated by your path. Because the path is not the destination. It's just the path. Right? And of course, it's attractive. I mean, oh my God, when we first came across it and our marriage changed, I mean, that's all we could talk about. It's all we wanted to talk about. I understand that. I really do. And even sometimes now and then we fall into that a little bit. But boy, being ordinary, being within yourself, you know. When Sid talks about not striving, that's part of it, you know. Like just giving up the search. Even 
looking into the three principles at some point can become a search, an outside search. I've done it. I know that's a fact. So here's what Sid says about it. All you have to do, I love this, all you have to do is realize you are this super conscious state. And as you start to truly realize and experience that fact, then that super conscious state will turn around, take care of you and guide you and take you home to where you belong. So apparently that's all we have to do. <laughs> all we have to do is listen, you know? And when that silence comes in our lives, just for whatever reason, sometimes during this weekend it's come. Maybe it'll come later on this afternoon when you're sitting by yourself or going for a walk. Just accept that there's information in that silence, that there's information in the feeling that comes when that silence is there. And it's the very, very information that you're looking for. There is no information outside more important than that or more true than that. Okay. It truly is within. I just really want to thank Sid Banks. You know, that he showed us so much love. He gave us his life, his entire life. Right? I mean, I know he had his family, he had time with his family, that's true. And he loved his family, but man, he lived and breathed any opportunity he had to relieve human suffering. And if we at the school have talked to him too, maybe too much in some people's eyes, I actually, I don't care, you know. It's not Sid Banks the man, it's the fact, two things. It's the fact that something came through this person, something came out of nowhere into his consciousness. There's no way to explain it, why him? Okay. So grateful for that, but also grateful to him for having the courage to walk out into the world and say, this is what I found and to continually share it with the world for almost, well, for 40 some years, right? I am, so I'll be eternally grateful for that. I love the way he just ignored death. That's probably the wrong word. It just didn't bother him, you know? When Elsie was telling the story about those Israeli, so the wounded soldiers that were visiting him, <laughs> I remember that feeling when his voice, he'd been only speaking in a whisper for quite a while, for at least, anyway, quite a while. And all of a sudden that, his 42 year old voice was there, solid as can be, you know? And I remember every hair in my body just standing on end and thinking, oh my God. <clears throat> I know I'm, I'm losing my voice, but after it quieted down, he talked to those guys and you could just hear him telling the story, you know? This is what happened, this is what is true. This is who you are. And he's just telling them that these guys, they must have wondered where they ended up or how, you know, these, these soldiers. <clears throat> and when he had finished, there was a long silence. And one of the soldiers said, Sid, how do you feel about the fact that you're laying here dying of cancer? And there was a bit of a pause and Sid said, well, it's bloody inconvenient. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Just inconvenient. Yeah. Yeah. We were staying near the hospital in Vancouver before he came home for the last time. Going in and seeing him in the hospital. And Jan and I were shopping in Vancouver and I found this beautiful wool, navy blue wool overcoat, British style overcoat and I, I, I fell in love with it and bought it right so the next day we go into the, the hospital to see Sid and I'm wearing this really great looking overcoat and Sid says oh oh that should be mine <laughs> that should be mine and we started laughing right so Sid and, Sid and Judy and Jan and I are going home on the ferry for the last time basically from the hospital 
and we're in this kind of general seating area on the ferry. And still Sid's kidding me about that, that coat should have been mine, you know? And we're just laughing over nothing, this is a silly joke. <clears throat> and I get up to go to the restroom and Sid says, I don't know if you should do that because I could steal that coat while you're gone. <laughs> and we started laughing again, right? And uh, I went to the restroom. When I came back, Jan and Judy and Sid were just chuckling away, just chuckling away. And I started laughing, they started laughing harder. And then rings of laughter started to come out of all the people in the room and just, it spread through the room. It was absolutely amazing. The, all these strangers laughing had no idea what they were laughing at, you know? And it was just this amazing feeling, absolutely amazing feeling, you know? That's how he shared the principles. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Oh man, what a ride we've all had. What a ride. Loved hearing Elsie today. It's been a while, you know, since we had that opportunity to, to work together, at least a year even on Zoom, but three years since we did it in person. And, uh, it was just lovely to hear her talking from the heart, so simple and straightforward honoring Sid's request to keep it simple and go from the feeling. I thought for myself, that was the best I've ever heard, Elsie. Boy, I feel that quiet with us all right now. Mm -hmm. Amazing feeling. That silence really is the melting of separate realities and the emergence of the oneness amongst us. I mean, I know that sounds, it just is. Can you imagine if millions and millions of people in the world could have that feeling? Could move away from the separation and the judgment and the beliefs you know, we'd see the end of the insanity of war and famine and starvation and greed, power, all of that. I don't know that I'll see much of that in my life, but I know it's coming. I can hear Sid now talking about our weekend saying, talk about thought. Talk about what we've learned about thought. Talk about how we do live at the end of our thinking. Talk about how we shouldn't be afraid of our experience, right? But then look to the mystical. Because there, in that mystical feeling in the silence is where we see it all. Then we talk from experience, from the knowing. And I know he loved when people shared a story of their own insight or a story that, like when Tori was talking earlier of um, seeing somebody get an insight. Yeah. And that the stories bring it alive and yeah. again give people hope. He, Sid loved the idea of hope. Yeah. That was so special to him that and how powerful hope is. Yeah. That it changes the direction of your thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the, the look I remember on Sid's face in his last days was um, while we could still go out for lunch and which he loved to do lunch or breakfast and and sitting there in this particular restaurant here that we all love and uh, 
even though he'd been suffering with his illness and when he was in that feeling of the now just being at lunch sitting around a table and and, uh, and I remember him looking out the window and that that look in, of joy and love in his eyes and gratitude it was just shining out of him and that that was so powerful because it was really in so many ways the, the hardest time of his life and uh, mm-hmm. one of the hardest times since we'd known him and uh, he he could switch from one world to the other and that that's what I feel like I learned more than anything is that I can live in a new world when I go deeper and and everything is different and new and and what I was wishing for having your dreams come true that was another thing that he would talk about I always have a dream that not not takes you out of the now but but gives you that feeling having a feeling of a dream and then forgetting about it and then and eventually it'll just come true when you're not thinking about it but it was contagious when he was sitting there enjoying his back garden or his sitting in a restaurant having lunch that feeling was so contagious and it is contagious. Mm-hmm. I love that we get so much while we're here together, but the real event or the real results inevitably come when you go back to your ordinary life and you'll be standing at the kitchen sink or something and just all of a sudden insights will start coming in from what we've been learning this weekend. That's really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. It's, you know, people often describe insight in terms of I thought this or I saw that, and that's great. But sometimes insight is like you're looking at the world, right? And you've had a quiet mind, you've, you've listened to something that's touched you, and you had a, a beautiful feeling, and you're looking at the world, and all of a sudden, mm-hmm. boom, mm-hmm. it's different. I mean, it doesn't really matter what the specific insight is. It's the fact that you're seeing the world from a new place. It's 